Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Sing aloud to God, let the people shout before his throne. Hallelujah, sing aloud to God, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord from the ends of the earth. From the depths of the sea, the of the sea let all creation praise His name. From the ends of the earth, from the, ends of the, earth, from the depths of the sea, the of the sea let all creation praise His name. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong
It's uh, Memorial Day weekend, and this is a time when a lot of us think about those that have, we've lost, that have gone on before us, those that gave the ultimate sacrifice so that we can have our freedoms in this country, and, and for that we are truly grateful. And we probably think of, of memories for those people, things that make us laugh, those that make us cry. And, and this is a time in our worship when we come together and, and we remember Christ. We remember that he died on that cross, and it makes me think of Peter. What would his memories have been of Jesus had he not risen from the grave? You think one of the last times they had their meal, the, the Last Supper, around that table, and Jesus says, Peter, before the rooster crows, you'll deny me three times. And Peter's like, no, it's not going to happen, not going to happen. But what happens? He denies him three times. And, and what would Peter's thoughts have been if the guy he'd hung around constantly for three years he ended up denying. He ended up not saying, I don't know that guy. What would his thoughts have been? How would he remember Jesus? But thankfully for Peter and for us, Christ rose from that grave. We're thankful that, that Peter's memory and, and our recollection of him is not just somebody who denied Christ. That's not where his story ended, but it was as one who then becomes a pillar of the church, you know, preaching that that sermon in Acts chapter 2. He's able to you know, have that memory of Christ and actually transform him into something great. And that was God that did that. God transformed him. So as we sit around this table, we remember Christ. We remember that death. What we're actually, though, celebrating is this resurrection that we have in Christ. Let's pray. Dear God, we're so thankful for Jesus. We're thankful for his, his body that was given on that cross. It was broken. It was beaten. It was pierced, God, and we are taking this bread that represents his body, and we just pray that we do it in a manner pleasing your sight, just thinking back on that. And we're so thankful that that body was resurrected and the tomb was empty. In Jesus' name pray, amen. God, we're so thankful for Jesus. We're so thankful for the, the blood that he shed on that cross, the blood that cleanses us, the blood that washes us. We're so thankful that you gave your son and that he, he had to go through that for us. We, we're so thankful for the love that you've shown us. And we're so thankful that we are able to partake of this cup that represents his blood. And, and each time we take, we pray that we remember how much you love us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Scripture reading today will be Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. 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 And He will lift you up. And He will lift you up. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing was lost. 
Welcome to Lake Homa. If this is your first time here, we are extremely glad to have you here. Our elders and our ministers get together for prayer time each week. It used to be at 8 o'clock, but since we are not meeting at the building, we're doing that at 9 o'clock now. And the other day, as we were on our Zoom call talking, uh, praying together, it was very evident to me it's very evident to me that the Spirit of God is in this place. The Spirit of God is here. And I see it in how you are living your lives through this pandemic. I see it in the way that you reach out to people, the meals that you provide for one another. I see it in the masks that are being made I see it in the pantry, in the way that the pantry has been just full. Your generosity is, a, is just unbelievable. I also see it in the way that you're giving. You guys are awesome. I mean, there was a bathroom remodeled, and then we have three individuals who committed their lives to Jesus Christ in baptism, Shirley and Aaron and Jill. Man, the Spirit of God is here. The Spirit of God is in this place. And it's very evident. And as I was thinking about that, it brought me back to a verse. It just popped into my mind as I was thinking about all the ways in which God is working in this place. And it's a verse I learned in the NIV. And it's in Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 through 15. And it says this, Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. That's our new series. Shine like the stars. We need to shine like the stars in the universe. Now, what Paul was talking about to the Philippians is in the midst of a depraved and crooked generation, they were shining like stars in the universe. That's what I see in you. That's what I see in you. I don't know about you, but I feel like our world is kind of tearing apart. I, I, even our country. It just seems like there's just a left and there's a right, there's a red, there's a blue. 
And we could go on with all the differences that are happening in our culture today. And it just seems like we're just tearing apart more and more. And I know the reason. The reason is we're more concerned about ourselves than we are about others. That's the reason why all this happens. And because there's no absolute truth. And when there's a when there's when that's missing in a culture, absolute truth, then everybody can do what they want. Their truth is their own. It doesn't really matter. And so there's a lot of this going on, but there's not this going on in our culture today. We kind of lost that absolute truth in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We know that. We understand that. And we understand why that why our culture is like that. But what that does is it creates people who are more lovers of self than they are lovers of God. And, be, and that's what's tearing us apart. And, and hey, this isn't anything new. I'm not telling you anything new. In fact, Paul talks about it there in Philippians, but he also talks about it in Timothy. Listen to this. But understand this that in the last days there will come times of difficulty for people will be lovers of self. People will be lovers of self. You know, like Oma, I'm so proud of you. Just, just, I love telling people where I work. I love telling them about our church. I love telling them about you. You guys are great. And I just appreciate you more and more and more each and every day. So thank you for what you do. Thank you for the way that you love and thank you for the way that you care. Now, we're at a time right now where we're going to be coming back together for worship. And here's what I know. Let, if we can just talk a little bit. I know there are differences of opinion on either side of the issue of in-person worship. I know some people probably said, why have we waited so long? Why can't we get back together? Let's just do it right now. Whatever it takes, let's get back together. And then the other side is saying, no, let's, let's do whatever it takes to wait until a vaccine. I'm not coming back until there's a vaccine. And so you've got these two extremes. And then you've got a lot of people with do- a lot of differences of opinion in, in different areas. I mean, wherever they are on that spectrum. And so that's the extremes that we're dealing with. And each of you who are members should have received a, an email that contained kind of the guidelines that we're going to follow for our in-person worship. And you should have gotten those about the the worship, and then from the children's area as well. And then you should have also received a um, a form, um, a survey. Yeah, a survey that you could fill out. Very short, very simple. Fill out that survey so we can get some input on kind of where you are in your thinking. Now, we're going to have two services. We're going to have 8.30 and 10.30. We're not going to define which one you can go to. You can go to either one. Personally, I'm a I'm an early bird, so I like would like an 8:30 service. That would be awesome for me. But I'm going to have to go to the 10:30 as well, which that's fine. I don't mind. But many of you have probably had already made up your mind on which one you're going to go to, and that's great. We're going to try and keep it to about 160, and if we need to. If we need to, we're going to use the fellowship hall for overflow. And you can watch it online if we have too many at one service. So that's that's kind of how we're going to do this. And I know there's a lot of things that are going to go on. Now, here's a question. Here's a question I think we need to ask ourselves. I know, or at least I'm asking myself, is I know that we're all different. We all have different thoughts. We all have different ways of thinking about this. And we all have different ideas on how this ought to go down. We all do. So with all those differences of opinion, which are many, 
how do we as a church hold together hold together in unity there's a word i want to throw out to you it's called countercultural counterculture it means going against the norm it means not doing exactly what everybody else is doing in culture i know that there are a lot of people who um want their own way it's it's all of us want our own way we all want to have our own way but when it comes to this matter when it comes to the idea of getting back in person worship there's some things that we need we need to be aware of i know we're all aware of these and but you know there are some people that say well this doesn't pertain to me i don't have to do that i think masks are silly i don't think we should wear those and you know if you're requiring them you understand what i'm saying so here's here's what i'd like to do i'd like to talk about some characteristics i'm just going to talk about two this morning characteristics of countercultural characteristics that I believe you and I need in our own lives, okay? These characteristics are important, very important. Because they're important because they help us hold together. They help us be unified. And so that first one, that first one is countercultural unity. That's what I want to talk about first. Now, most of this series is going to come out of Philippians. I find it a book of unity. And I want us to look at one passage in Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. It's a powerful verse. It says this, Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm, that you're holding your ground in one spirit with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel do you understand what we're talking that's talking about there it's almost like struggling side by side that's like homa that's what we do we struggle side by side for that one mind one one spirit for that faith of the gospel standing firm in that that's who we are rabbi zacharias rabbi i don't know exactly how to say his name rabbi zacharias died on tuesday of this past week he's one of those intellectuals apologetics apologetics who did apologetics, who was one of my heroes in many ways. I've started watching him uh, probably a year now. I can't get enough of him. He is so intelligent, was so intelligent. And some of his uh, videos that you can get online are just absolutely wonderful his intellect his, and the way he reads and just he is so far beyond anything that i could ever do but he told this story one time about unity he said you know when donkeys get in a fight you know what they do they get in a circle and then they face out and when the enemy comes they start kicking but they kick each other and kill each other. Whereas horses, on the other hand, when they get an enemy approaches them, they get in a circle face to face, face to face. And then they kick outward, kicking the enemy as it is coming to them. Two different things, the donkey or the horse. A donkey is sometimes what we call disunity. Lake Homa is a horse. The ones that struggle together side by side, that won't beat each other up, but are against the enemy that is out there. 
That enemy sometimes is in our hearts, isn't it? I know it is in mine. That heart that wants what I want, that heart that cares only about self. And I think most of us understand that. Most of us have that times, those times where we want what we want and we desire what we desire. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, Paul says this. Verses 1 and 2, sorry about that. So, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation of the, in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. One mind. It's a frame of mind. This same love, this being in full accord, is of this, it's, it's having a framework, a framework of unity, countercultural unity. Did you enjoy Mason Duvall reading our scripture today from Ephesians chapter 4? Hey, that's a passage that Lake Homa has latched onto. It's a passage that has created a DNA in this congregation of it's not about me, it's about others. It's about loving others and caring about them. And I will forsake my my wants, my, my thoughts for yours. And I love that passage, and I just want to read it again. And it says this, Therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. With all humility, with all gentleness, with all patience, bearing with one another. As we go back in two weeks to worship, things are going to be different. Things are going to be different. We're going to have masks for everybody to wear as you come in. The mask will be outside. People will be handing them out if you do not have one. Thank you, ladies, for making those as well as I already said, but thank you again. Also, you'll be able to pick up your Lord's Supper if you're on the east side. We have these little singles, cups, and it has the bread on top and the juice in there. And so you'll just pick one of those up for all those that need to partake of the Lord's Supper and bring that with you as you come in. And don't stay in the foyer. Don't hang out there. That's what we do. I understand that. But that's not how we're going to, we have to operate with social distancing. Our foyer is pretty small. And so we need you to say, okay, I'm going to go on in and I'm going to find my place and I'm going to sit down. And we'll have, we'll have ushers in there and they're going to be kind of guiding you to where to sit and we'll have everything marked off so you can only get in certain pews and you can't get in other pews. These are things that we have to do and we need to do to keep everyone safe. This isn't about us. Remember, this isn't about us. This is about those who will come. And, and if, you are in, if you're a person that has, has some physical problems or is or older or maybe immune compromised, please, please stay home. We still will have worship online, so please stay home. And, and if you feel that you can't come, but if, you, if you're going to come, I know that we're going to have people that probably fit into those categories that are going to come. It's okay if you don't, but it, it's okay if you do. And we're going to bear one, with one another in all of this. Okay, that's what we're going to do. And so it requires that unity. It requires that struggling together. It requires us thinking of others before we think of ourselves. And what that means is, is 
countercultural humility. Humility. It's not about me. <laughs> it's not about me. It's about others. That verse in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 4, it's one that gets me a lot. And it hits me. Because I know my heart. I know that I want what I want sometimes. Listen to this. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have you noticed how remarkably confident each of us are in our views? I mean, really, we are so confident in our views. Yeah, but that humility means I think of others before I think of myself. And it may be that I might be wrong. And if I'm not, I shouldn't gloat over it. But our role as believers is to think of others before we think of ourselves. Now, I can tell you something. None of this is going on in the world out there, in the culture. And that's why all of this is countercultural. It's different. It's not the same. It's because you and I, we have a Lord who gave his life for each and every one of us that didn't think equality with God something to be grasped, but gave up his life so that you and I, gave up his position so that you and I, you and I could have the hope of life eternal. We are to be like Christ, who offered himself up. And in the coming weeks, as we get ready for in-person worship, there's going to come in those times when you, we may think, I don't need to do that. For the sake of others, would you please? I know it's, man, it may not even feel like worship. It may, it, I, I just want to be back together. I want us to just sing. I just want to hear your voices. Virtual hugs. No handshakes. It's still not where we want to be. We want to be together as one. There will be a day. But for right now, for right now, this is going to be our new normal. And so we have to spread out. We can't all get in into one service. But this is a start. I'm so excited about that first worship. I don't know what it's going to look like. I have some ideas of kind of some things I think would be great. But I look forward to that day when we will be back together. I look forward to June the 7th. I'm excited to see your faces, even if I can only see your eyes. I love you very much. And we'll continue this discussion next week. Get a few more things, I think, that need to be said as we prepare for our in-person worship in two weeks. May God bless you. I love you very much.
good morning or good afternoon, family. Um, it's uh, good to be with you today. Uh, I uh, have the uh, opportunity to uh, finish this off this morning with a, a closing prayer. And uh, uh, before I do that, uh, uh, I would like for you to would like to uh, encourage you to uh, fill out the uh, uh, survey that uh, James and Mike have sent out uh, about our getting back together. I don't know about you, but I am, I am sure excited about being back together uh, uh, on uh, June the 7th for the first time in seems like three months. So uh, we are uh, preparing to do all that we can to uh, ameliorate any uh, problems that we would have because of uh, the virus and we want to allay any fears that you might have. Uh, although uh, I'm not sure that we can allay any fears that that generally would come from God, wouldn't it? So uh, uh, hopefully our faith in God has got us to where we're not too fearful about uh, things of the future. But uh, anyway, we're doing all that we can to uh, uh, keep the uh, virus uh, at bay uh, here at, at our congregation amongst our flock. So uh, we are excited uh, for what's coming and uh, would like your input on that uh, survey. So uh, if you would get those uh, filled out and sent back in just as soon as you can, we'd appreciate it. Um, so I don't have uh, anything else. Uh, so let's, uh, let's end our time together uh, in prayer. Let's pray. Father, you are the sovereign being over all and creator of all. And uh, at the same time, uh, you call us your children. And what a powerful, powerful thought that is. And uh, being your children, Father, we know that you love us. We uh, know that you love us beyond anything that we can comprehend. Uh, because you sent your son uh, to die in, in our place. And we thank you so much for that. Obviously, there's no way that we can repay you. And so we want to, uh, we beg that you would let us just live our lives uh, faithfully and in your service and uh, for your kingdom. We pray, Father, that you would increase our faith and give us. Uh, uh, an increased measure of faith in these hard times. We pray, Father, that you would allay any fears that we might have uh, as it relates to uh, uh, what has gone on these past three months uh, with the virus. Uh, Father, I thank you so much for those that have been uh, active and continue to be active in your work here at Lake Coma. For all the many acts of kindness that have been shown by one another. Uh, it has been a, a great thing to witness. And I just pray, Father, that as we uh, get back together, that our love for one another would continue to grow and that our compassion and caring for each other would continue to grow and that we would be a shining light in this community so that people can see how Christians should and do walk. Again, Father, we thank you for Jesus and what he's done. We thank you for the active involvement in the Holy Spirit's life in our lives. And we pray that you, he'll continue to guide us and give us wisdom as we go through from this point forward. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.